welcome back to this on location edition of Central Florida Spotlight. As you can tell, we're high above the I-4 Ultimate Project right below us on the Geico Garage here with traffic expert Raquel Asa and financial expert Joe Burt, who helps us to weigh through the numbers of how much this is costing, how much we're over, and all of the uh, infrastructure issues that these builders are dealing with. Joe, thanks for being with us. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you. Now, this is a $2.3 billion project, Joe. Now, we had mentioned we just talked about a financial report detailing a 245 delay, $100 million claim. At the end of the day, who's going to pay for it all? Well, it's got to go through the courts. You know, attorney, get rich quick day. You know, they'll be arguing about it. At the end of the day, Raquel, you and I will pay for it, probably through higher tolls in the years to come to get on those Lexus lanes. Now, this is very rare for Central Florida. How out of the ordinary is it for a project of this size and this magnitude to be so behind? Well, when you look at the magnitude of the project, 21 miles, and what we have to go through from the flat land pretty much of Altamont Springs along, but all the way through downtown, we have all these interchanges right behind us, the 408, and all the way down to the Disney area. It's incredible. In fact, this 408 interchange had to be redesigned. The original design, when it came in, didn't have provisions for the Lexus lanes, the express lanes, to go right onto the 408. Now, can you imagine what that have been? So they had to redesign the whole project. The good news is the redesign came in under cost, so there's no extra cost for you and me. But to answer your question directly, Raquel, it's an incredible project, particularly when we're dealing with what we have here in Central Florida, the underground, the subterranean, the sinkholes, who knows? And heaven forbid we have another hurricane. You know, we still have five, five years to go on this, and will we have another hurricane in five years? Heaven only knows, but let's pray we don't. Joe, when it comes yeah. to projects like this, and you see cost overruns, time uh, expanding, that's not unusual when you think of a project that's six years, 21 miles. So I don't want to let them off the hook, but it's expected, right? Yeah, this kind of stuff in this particular project is definitely expected. You look at some of the major projects around the country. We talked about this, the big dig in Boston. Right. I mean, that was billions of dollars overrun and years over. It, we're going to have it here. It's, it's inevitable. We're going to have it here. But that's, that's part of what you do when you do, do this kind of stuff. Now, this particular project was funded by about $100 million from the developer, Skanska, Skanska uh, about a $950 or, or a billion dollar loan from what's called TIAFA. That's a Transportation Infra Infrastructure Finance Innovation Act. That's from the federal government. And about $500 million from banks. So there's a lot of people on the hook here, but the, but the developer has about $100 million of hard money invested in this deal. Joe, I have a follow-up to that. There's also something you have to build in, and that's the cost of construction. You don't know how economies are going. If the economy's down, it's cheaper. If economies are up, it's more expensive. Greg, you're 100% right. When this thing was quoted or bid several years ago, construction costs weren't nearly what they were today. And we know how it's evolved and how it's changed. With all the demand for construction and the workers, they're having trouble finding workers for this job. This is one of the big problems that they have, is finding skilled workers to do this job. So those prices are continuing to go up. And I do know that workers are walking away from here after being trained and being lured into some of the other projects. If you just look behind me, there are high rises going up, apartments, condos, yep. and some are being lured away with more money. And this is a government type job, so maybe the wage isn't what it would be with a private contractor. Well, the, the wages are going to have continuing demand, not only now, Greg, but the next five years while this goes on. We're going to have cost overruns. There's no question about it. And at the end of the day, those Lexus lanes that we talked about, you and I are going to be paying for them if we want them. You know, I think a lot of viewers don't remember or don't know that those, we're, all, we're, only, we're only adding four extra lanes, okay? Those four lanes are toll lanes. They're not free lanes. So to get on them, you've got to pay in the, in the toll. Bad traffic could be as much as 21 bucks to get from one end to the other. But that's how it's being paid for, because it's a public-private partnership. Speaking about the P3, this is one of the first for Florida, Greg. And now, this particular project, we wouldn't have known about this 245 delay or this $100 million right. claim had it not been for this financial report that we reported right. on. Right. This financial report, they typically don't do this for many projects, but they did this for this particular item. Yeah, transparency is important because nobody likes surprises, and we're going to see more of these as time goes on. One of the important things on this project is that they have a, um, a uh, penalty if they don't finish on time. Liquidated damages, $200,000 a day. And their overhead... That'll motivate you. Well, listen, not only that, Greg, but their overhead on this project is $200,000 a day. $400,000 a day, $12 million a month if they're not on time. So that's why we have them working at night, Saturdays and Sundays. Is it true that about a million dollars of construction per day is happening here? Yes, that's what they say, a million dollars of concrete and labor is going, going right on around us. It's hard to believe, but that's, you're going to look at a $2.3 $2 billion project. Is there any good news? Are we getting a good deal? When you look at this and compare it to other projects, 
Will any of us feel good about the money that's being spent well, other than the roads are going to be better? I, well, hopefully the roads will be better for you and me and all of our viewers. You know, that, that's a critical thing. I don't know how much these express lanes are going to help. They're trying to smooth out some of the, like the Fairbanks curve that we all know how disaster that is. And these interchanges downtown, hopefully that will help the situation. But I think the public-private partnership is where we have to go because the, because the public does not have enough money to do these major projects. So you get the private sector involved, and yet the only way to pay for it is do, doing these lectures through these toll lanes. But I think it's a wave of the future. We know President Trump has talked about it. So thank All you. right, Joe, thank you. Very good to we see you. We appreciate it. Okay. Joe Bird, who was on Channel 9 when I started 32 years ago. Right out of kindergarten. And I don't think you've <laughs> aged at all. Bless your heart. <laughs> Absolutely. Joe Burt, Certified Financial Group. Raquel, that was fantastic. I want to thank Joe Burt, thank our team for help providing this amazing view of this project. And as we just said, we're only halfway there. So be patient, be careful, most importantly. And again, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And it'll be over before you know it, I hope. On that note, we'll close the book on this edition of Central Florida Spotlight. Have a great remainder of your weekend. Take care.